teach we are to find. So where you lead me, I will go. Touch my lips by your strength, I will go. I will go. My eyes have seen the King. I must tell all the world, worship Him. In all the nations, in all the world, where He sends me, yes, I will go. I will go. Pleasant evening, saints of God. Those of you that are viewing on live, I say welcome. I bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy Sabbath to one and all. Viewers, please text Happy Sabbath, for this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8 to 11 says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son nor thy daughter nor thy man's servants, nor thy maid servants, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth, the sea and the fountains of waters. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Psalms chapter 121 says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Because sisters and brothers, in the house of the Lord, there is safety. 
In the house of the Lord, there is everlasting love. In the house of God, there is peace. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the creator, the redeemer, of, and, and sustainer, our soon coming king, I pray, O oh Lord God, as I present this message, that you will send on your Holy Spirit upon me and upon everyone in the hearing of my voice. Beat back the power of the devil. And Father God, if you can use anything, you can use me. Take my hands and my feet. Touch my heart. Speak through me. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. It was the year 1933, March 4th. The United States was in great turmoil, despair, due to the crisis known as the Great Depression. At a time when the country was in the midst of experiencing the most economic depression it had ever seen, over three years of decline, it needed a dose of hope. On March 4th, 1933, President Roosevelt delivered a speech that is still talked about and mentioned in books and articles. For a phrase that resonates deeply, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. With those words, sisters and brothers, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Roosevelt made it clear that the number one enemy was not the unstable economy, but fear itself. Sisters and brothers, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I come here today to tell you all that the number one enemy is not the financial problem you are facing. The number one enemy is not your bad health. You may enter the doctor's office, and the doctor might give you some months to live, but that is not your number one enemy. Your number one enemy, sisters and brothers, ladies and gentlemen, is not the people that will attack you. The number one enemy is not your struggles, but saints of the Most High God, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the number one enemy is Satan himself. For you see, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principality and power in high places. Satan is the one that tempted our four parents in the Garden of Eden. They disobeyed God. And God came calling Adam, Adam. And the Bible says that Adam said, I heard thy voice and I was afraid. And Adam said, I heard thy voice and I hid myself because I was afraid. Fear, sisters and brothers, came upon mankind because man disobeyed the commandments of God. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, today's message is captioned. Fear in the city. Fear in the city. Fear is a mind killer. As a Cuban psychologist put it, fear is a monster that sends shivers down your spine. Fear steals your thoughts and can hijack your dream and willpower, sisters and brothers. It can make you forget what you know and lose sight of who you are. It makes you feel out of control and that you can never regain it. Fear, sisters and brothers, boys and girls, can make you demanding rather than humble and serving. Are you taking it down, here, down there? It makes you think that God is insignificant in the face of your problems and challenges. It makes you search in people for what you can only find in Jesus Christ. 
You see, sisters and brothers, boys and girls, you cannot put your trust in man. They will let you down. But oh, what a friend and counselor we have in Jesus. All our sins and our grief to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Trust in Jesus and there will be no need to fear. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, what is it you are afraid of? What is it I am afraid of? Are you afraid of judgment? For the Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die, and after death is the judgment. Are you afraid of abandonment? Failure? Disappointment in yourself? Or not living up to the expectation of others? Brothers and sisters, saints of the Most High God, do not listen to the negative voice that tells you you are not good enough. It is going to fail. So why try? Fear can stop you even before you get going. Saints of the Most High God, we are living in a world that is filled with fear. And it is a complex situation that affects both young and old and can be related to several contributed factors, such as crime and violence. Sisters and brothers, boys and girls, the prescription of, of insecurity due to crime and violence in the cities is one of the primary factors that contribute to fear. Such as robberies. Am I not speaking the truth? Assaults. Homicides. Can generate fear in the population, especially in areas with high crime rates. Am I not speaking the truth, sisters and brothers? Transportation problem. Insecurity in public transportation, such as robberies, sexual harassment on train and buses, can increase fear in people. Imagine you have your children traveling on bus every day and on news you're hearing about sexual harassment. That will contribute fear in your mind, sisters and brothers. It will make you fearful. It will put you to think. This can limit people's mobility and affect their quality of life. Social and media pressure, the constant spread of news about violence, incident, crime in the media, and on society's networks can increase fear in the society. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the overexpose of scary stories can contribute to a distorted prescription to safety in the city. This shows in government institutions responsible for maintaining security and public order can lead to increased fear. The prescription of corruption or, in, or inefficiency can undermine the sense of security in the world today. Ladies and gentlemen, this world is overflowing with fear. It's like you cannot make a joke. Everyone is on edge. This wall, sisters and brothers, ladies and gentlemen, is bent out of shape. Because what is wrong is talked about like if it's right. And what is right, it seems like if it's wrong. Men married in men. And this is abomination, sisters and brothers. But we all know that this wall is not our home. We just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angel beckoned me from heaven, open doors, and I just cannot feel like home in this wall anymore. Sisters and brothers, the only way we can overcome fear 
is by putting our faith in Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. What do you say? Type amen to that. Although the Bible is not a psychological manual or a therapist on the brain, it dives deeply into the subject of fear. In fact, the phrase, do not be afraid, appears about 365 times, one for each day, making it the most repeated message throughout the Bible. Fear not. Stand back and see the salvation of the Lord. Sisters and brothers, today I want us to know, those of you that are battling with cancer, fear not and see the salvation of the Lord because Jesus is the great physician. You that have a financial problem, fear not and see the salvation of the Lord because Jesus is the finance minister of the universe. Someday soon, we all will be walking on sheets of gold. You that is having a mental unstableness, mourning the loss of your loved one, fear not, sisters and brothers, because Jesus is the resurrection and the life. For First Thessalonians chapter 4, 16 and 17 says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise forth. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Sisters and brothers, the word fear and terror are mentioned over 200 times. It might be surprising that a book recounting the deeds of historical figures talked so much about fear. But the Bible records that more than 200 of his character experienced fear. And most of them were overcomers because they put their trust and confidence in Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. We too, sisters and brothers, can become overcomers. We too can overcome sisters and brothers, but by only putting our trust in the blood of Jesus. For what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me pure within? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Sisters and brothers, it is possible to live without fear. Say amen to that. Type amen to that. It is possible to live without fear. You see, many have sought answers through psychologies and all sorts of therapies trying to change their thinking and behavior. Others have turned to medication viewing fear as a kind of illness. However, they discover while these therapies and medication can help, they are not the only option. They are not the best option. For Jesus, sisters and brothers, is the answer. For Jesus is the solution. For if you want joy, real joy, wonderful joy, let Jesus come into your heart. For your sins will wash them away and your night will turn to day. Sisters and brothers, turn to the person sitting next to you and say your night will turn to day. The Bible, the Bible, sisters and brothers, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible, the B-I-B-L-E, basic instruction before leaving planet Earth tells us that we can face and overcome fear through faith. Are you taking it down there? That you can, you can face and overcome fear through faith. Faith in Jesus Christ. Yes, young people. Faith is the divine antidote to eradicate all our fears. For Matthew chapter 17, 20 to 21 says, For truly I tell you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, 
and it will move and nothing will be impossible unto you. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1 says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. In other words, sisters and brothers, faith is trusting in God. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Saints of the Most High God, brothers and sisters, boys and girls, it is important to note that not just any kind of faith overcomes fear, but the faith that accept the existence of God, the creator of the heaven and the earth, conquers all fear. If you want joy, real joy, let Jesus come into your heart. For your sins, sisters and brothers, will wash away, and your night will turn to day. Those who believe in God have a compass that guide them through the difficulties of this world. On the other hand, for those who do not believe in God, the world can be confusing and discouraging. Life becomes complicated and directionless. Faith that overcometh fear not only accepts the existence of God, but also seeks to develop a special relationship with Him. It is not enough to know that God exists, it is necessary to come to know him. I repeat, it is not enough to know that God exists, but it is necessary to come to know him. Because when you get to know God, sisters and brothers, you will then gain love, justice, and righteousness. Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 23 to 24 says, Thus said the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glory yet glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me that I am the Lord, which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness, in all of the earth. For in this thing I delight, said the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, saints of the Most High God, young people, when we talk about knowing God, we do not mean comprehending Him fully. As mankind, we cannot fully grasp an infinite being drew to our mental limitation, moral problem, and more so because of sin. Someone once said that faith involved trusting that God will do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Through faith, sisters and brothers, ladies and gentlemen, involved taking God's words and trusting that he will fulfill his promise even though humanly speaking it may seem impossible because we all know that what is impossible with man is possible with God because we serve a God that sits on the throne and that he will never forsake it, his own sisters and brothers when we trust in God our perception of life changes completely. Trusting God transforms everything. It frees us from the negative effects of the past and from negative emotions. By trusting that everything is in the hand of God, we live without fear, knowing that nothing happened without his consent. Yes, sisters and brothers, I am longing for that day when there will be no more crime and violence. What about you? I am longing for that day, sisters and brothers, when there will be no more sexual harassment. 
I will say like Abraham, I look for a city which builds and maker is God. Some nations, sisters and brothers, this world will have no fear for the lion and the lamb will lay together every man under his own vine. I am longing for the day, that day of peace and joy, sisters and brothers. What about you? For Revelation chapter 21 and verse 4 says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more pain, no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying. For the former things shall pass away. I am longing for that city, sisters and brothers. What about you? If this is your desire to be in a city where there will be no more pain, where there will be no more fear, please show by the way of your hand. Hands are going up all over the place. Praise be the name of the Lord. Let us bow our heads for prayer. Heavenly Father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I pray, oh, Heavenly Father, in a very special way for the people that listen to this message. I ask you, Lord God, that will provoke us unto righteousness, that will guide us, Heavenly Father, and that will help us to live a life that is pleasing unto thee. I pray for, for this church, the Seventh-day Adventist church in Grenada, Heavenly Father. I ask you to put a hedge around this church, Heavenly Father, and bless us and help us, O oh Lord, to continue to proclaim the good news of salvation. I pray for Heavenly Father that will be a shining light in our community so that when men and women see us, they will say, here goes a child of the king. I pray for this country, Heavenly Father. I pray for the government that will guide our prime minister, that will guide our government, that they will make the right decision in governing your holy people. Bless us as I pray in Jesus' holy name. May we all say, Amen.
Oh